Ugh. Today is day one of studying for my security post certification. The plan is to wake up at 5.30 every single morning for the next two and a half months. Study my foot off for this certification to ensure success. So, ugh. At 30 a.m. wake up to Gosh, they're hard. Let's get started. Can't this guy. So today is January 7th, 2019. The plan is to get this certification in March. And the biggest goal within this video is for you to understand the process and the journey of getting a security certification, even if it's in entry level one, like the security plus. Yo, what up? <laughs> Just joking. I completed the uh, vulnerability first module in the security plus yesterday, but totally forgot to record it. So today I start the second module, second modules. <laughs> I have completed two of six modules, meaning I have I have four more to go. But uh, continuing the process here, doing full site, it's really been helpful, and uh, I'll just continue to keep tracking along. And now I am done with three module three of six. I have three more to go. All right. I am done with the second to last module on Pluralsight. I've loved the saying so much more. Alrighty, so I have finished the Security Plus Get Certified Get Ahead by Daryl Gibson. This took me roughly three and a half, three and a half weeks. There's two tests and then they, the, uh, the, the objectives. Uh, really, it's a great book. Uh, so I completed all this, I did the um, pre-test, went through all the chapters, there's 15 questions after each chapter, and I will do the, the, uh, the, the end. There's also labs, there's also a um, remember this section, there's many, uh, there's many benefits. Once I you know, get the, uh, the review out of this book, for sure I'll definitely recommend this. It's definitely hands down a great book. So I just got done looking at the testing center that I'll be going to next week. And I think this is a good good idea to do, just to look at where you're, where you're going to be testing so you don't have to worry about that on testing day. Yeah, really great building right there. But I think it's a good idea if you look at your testing center before you go test. Alrighty, so I uh, just, just got out of the exam, just took the test. I had clicked the submit button and um, I thought there is no way I passed that. Uh, there's two simulations that I completely got off, and um, I don't know. I just did. I was like, did not pass that. Um, so for in for a retry, but somehow, some way, I got it. So I feel so good right now. Uh, I cannot believe I actually got that the first try. Uh, it feels great, but um, there's a lot to learning ahead, and of course, the documented journey will be. Hello everyone, my name is Grant Collins. I'm a cybersecurity student who recently just got his CompTIA Security Plus certification. In today's video, we are going to talk about two things. The journey that I had given myself or I had gone through the learning journey and the particular test of, in and of itself and my thoughts on the test. So stay tuned for both of those comments and regards, I think. Ninety days before the exam, I went ahead and scheduled this particular date that I was going to take the certification exam. Uh, I did not end up buying the exam voucher, therefore I could not exactly um, officially plan the the date. So I was just leaving it on my calendar and thinking I would adjust as I continue to go. After the ninety day time frame that I had outlined, or the particular test date, I went ahead 
and started with an outline. Uh, an outline of what I was going to be learning, what resources I was going to be using, and the particular materials that I was going to commit to learning throughout this 90-day, roughly 90-day process. I will be doing a different video uh, regarding the exactly what resources I learned or what resources I used and how I learned. I had picked both video and audio as, of course, video, audio, and reading, so all three uh, as my primary ways of learning. I use the Pomodori technique, which means I do 25 minutes of focus work and five minutes of break. So I sectioned out my learning into weeks, starting with week one, you know, and then went to the ending week, and I said, okay, week one I'll do this video or online course or this section of it, 10 Pomodori, whatever it was. Uh, and so I had given myself an outline. The biggest thing throughout the process I learned that was that this outline really did give me clarity um, it learned, I learned that it was, you know, when I was lost, go to the outline, you know, go to the outline, see what I was supposed to do initially, and that's what I did. So it was two and a half months of learning, and using that outline gave me clarity. The biggest thing that I tried to focus on, I wasn't, of course, it wasn't perfect, was consistency. Uh, consistency in the learning process. And so I had used two primary ways of being consistent. I used the Pomodoro technique which I recommend, I'll link to a video in the cards above that I did a few months ago regarding um, how much time you should spend learning cybersecurity. But the biggest thing is consistency. It's so important to be consistent. And to expand on the consistency, I think it's also really important that we give ourselves, or at least myself, uh, enough time to actually consume and internalize the information that I'm reading, listening to, uh, writing down. And that includes, uh, you know, just really honestly having a certain particular threshold of learning for instance i only did two really two pomodori of focused work um, so two pomodori of focused work and that's it so not overdoing it was was what i'm trying to say here at the very end i did end up uh screwing up a little bit i had literally the friday before like a week or three days before i was going to take my test i scheduled the exam and it did end up working out, but all the exam centers, most of them, were already scheduled. And they were scheduled two months ahead. And so I think that the mistake that I made at the very beginning was just not committing fully. Find the exam voucher and going up until the very you know, certain threshold, Monday or whatever it was, going up to the 90 day threshold and just getting it, you know, just just putting it down and saying it's official, I did it. All right, now on to the certification test in and of itself. So I've given you the journey about how I learned roughly. I have probably a lot of filler talk right there, but let's go ahead and talk about the certification exam in and of itself. So when I walked into the certification exam, or the uh, CompTIA, no, it's the Pearson View Center, that's what it was. And I was very nervous. And I walked in, and they are very serious. It was the first time I've ever done one of these certifications. They pat you down. I mean, you gotta pat yourself down. But um, you know, it's serious, quiet room, focused. Uh, so uh, I was very nervous, and uh, so I, I walked in. And the first thing I did was I skipped the performance-based questions. I recommend you do that as a tip. I had six performance-based questions. I had 82 questions in total, including performance-based questions. I skipped the performance-based questions and I went on to the bulk of the exam, which was multiple choice. One commonality that I found among the multiple choice was given a scenario, do this. If you look at the CompTIA exam objectives, it says given a scenario or given a scenario, troubleshoot common security issues. This is something I missed. Uh, given a scenario, implement secure protocols. There's a lot of given a scenario on the objectives. Uh, I recommend that you do print those out. And so the commonality is there's a lot of scenarios. They, they put you into these examples. Um, they often use a security analyst is blah, blah, blah. And so these were hard. Uh, these were not as easy as just, oh, okay, what are the asymmetric um, uh, algorithms? You know, they weren't like that. You know, they were, they were definitely given a scenario, do this. Or what is the best choice. So uh, that was the one commonality I found among the multiple choice. And the biggest thing that I can tell you that, that really helped me um, 
even though I, I thought I failed, was focusing on detail. Focusing on detail and what they wanted in the question. I think we, at least me, I read through the question, I'm like, ah, what, what's the answer? Focusing on that detail is really important. And that really helped me uh, not have to flag a ton of questions because I really focused on the question and then moved on. So that's how I did it. Um, and so that was the one commonality I saw among the uh, given a scenario ones. So following those exam objectives are really important. Finding learning resources that include those exam objectives and really literally go you know, from the exam objectives is super important as well. One of the big things that uh, you can take away from the simulations is just don't stress over them. Uh, I think that they were, you know, they were fair, of course, but they're, they're a little bit harder. And I don't really know how CompTIA, we don't know how CompTIA sections off or scores their performance-based compared to the multiple choice. But I did my, uh, my um, simulations and then I went, went over my flag. I had 15 flag or mark for review uh, questions. And after that, I had submitted my exam with roughly 10 five minutes left. After I had submitted the exam, um, I thought, well, I completely failed that. I mean, I totally failed that. But I did end up getting my Security Plus certification. So things you can take away from the exam. Uh, first, it's a learning experience. You should have this just this mindset of it's a learning experience. That's one of the biggest things that was for me. It was a big learning experience. Uh, and so going into the exam was a learning experience. Number two is make sure you know kind of the context of the question. Again, focusing on the detail is super important. Uh, and reading through the question once, understand the question, marking down what you think is the best answer, and continue. Unless you are someone who, uh, or unless you stumble upon a question that is, you know, you're really debating between two multiple choice, maybe flag that one for review. But really, you don't want to flag all yours, of course, for review. So focusing on the detail. Number three is that there's a lot of given a scenario, do this. And so um, understanding the, basically how to apply a concept within the Security Plus objectives to a scenario. Uh, as I'll outline in a future video, there is some good resources out there that will help you kind of understand the questions and I will be outlining those resources. There's also gonna be a link in the description below behind the resources I used right now. Number four was skip the simulation questions. I skipped them. It helped me be more calm throughout the exam. Number five is I thought it was harder than um, it was going to be. Now I had looked up some other YouTube videos, but it, it is hard. I mean, it's not something that's not a layup exam. It's not a layup exam because they have those real world contexts. And number six I would give is make sure you know how to read the logs and make sure you know different tools, um, the tools regarding the ones within the uh, CompTIA Security Plus objectives. What do I mean by that? Like NetStat, NetCat, Tracer, NMAP, um, those tools. Make sure you know the differences between those tools. And, and if I were you, and this is something that I didn't do, learn how to use those tools. I think actually applying them applying them is really important. So that was my journey to both the Security Plus and my thoughts on the Security Plus exam. If you found this video helpful, which I hope you did, please make sure to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video. I'm just joking, uh, but uh, if you did, that's all I really want to do. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below. Of course, there will be links in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.